sticking with ray guns for sure is the best uh, thing to come out of out of DFW, uh, in my opinion. I mean, Bobby Sox was he was kind of the first guy that that was one of those memorable singers. You know, he stood out so much and so crazy, and you never knew what he was going to do. Uh, everybody's favorite Nazi. Dead cat and and punk rock and and stuff just like flying everywhere. <laughs> I was the bass player for Stickman of Dragons from 1981 through 1988 or so when we kind of disbanded for the last time. Like from I don't know 80. 81 or 82 when, when you know kind of from the beginning until 85 or 86 we played just about every weekend somewhere playing ground zero we got blackballed from playing ground zero because bobby socks came on the stage he came up and ganged it he, we got with oh it'd be cool to have bobby socks come up and sing a song with us yeah. he got up there and sang and he gagged himself and he puked and that was the end of that i've, I've tried hard to forget about that. <laughs> Uh, I remember one time we let him. This is this is it. Yeah, by the time Bar Soap was around after he got out of jail or whatever, and he came around and he wanted to run a tab. Well, he ran a twelve dollar tab. We never saw him again. I thought that was money just well spent. He was such a genius when it came to just being a degenerate, like weirdo. His name is Bobby Sox. Born and raised in Oak Cliff, though, as one Robert Calverly. Ow! On this particular night, Bobby's band, Stick Men with Ray Guns, is playing for a private party at Dallas's Hot Club. The party is to celebrate the release of an album by some of the city's punk rock groups. They play a kind of music that is largely ignored by Dallas radio stations. Music described as invigorating, raw, frenetic, angry, evil, blasphemous social commentary. I'm not too fond of organized religion, so I kind of kick God around a little bit. But it's not really against him, it's against all the jerks that are soaking people for their money and just not really giving them anything in return, you know. I mean, it's like... You know, it's like Jesus Christ died so that TV evangelists could drive big cars and live in big houses. You know, it's nowhere. You know, we, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, a friend of mine just went and we loved the name. We thought, man, we just got to go see this local band. It just sounds like a crazy band. And we were really into like straight edge hardcore and stuff. And we thought, man, this is going to be great. You know, uh, they're going to be this real fast band. You know, it just sounds like that. And we get there and they were just this extremely loud death dirgy maniac type band And, and it was really things were really starting to fall apart with him and, and he called it the chop shop and he had, had all these blades and, and pointy instruments and stuff like that just stuck into the wall all over his apartment and there was an axe that was on a Christmas tree rotisserie stand that played Silent Night and it had Bible verses glued to it and it was painted turquoise blue and he said that he had chopped this guy's ear off that came to get some money from him. He had the ear stuck to the stuck to his wall. He was always a nice guy to me, but he didn't exactly have a friendly reputation. Bobby Sox had a little uh, thing where he liked to shit on the floor next to the toilet instead of the toilet all the time. And over in the corner there was like a, a big glass five gallon jug that had a, a neon tube in it that was connected to this electric fence power pack and it pulsed purple and he called it his brain. I've been on 
unemployed quite a bit, but <laughs> you know, now I'm making it. I'm I'm making food. I'm cooking. And I love it. I'm happy. I you know. I can cook and I can play rock and roll or I can play rock and roll or I can cook. And Bobby was a great guy and somebody I was fortunate enough to have as a friend. I know him long before he had a band or anything. We'd just stand out in the middle of, straight down in the middle of Greenville Avenue and smoke joints because that's how dead it was over there at my DJs at the time, you know? But uh, he was an outlandish character that eventually found a band. You know, as far as an iconic figure, Bobby Sox and Stick Me Ray Guns for the Dallas punk scene, there's no doubt he's on a pedestal. <laughs> they were filthy. I mean, <laughs> well, he was just so real, you know. I mean, thumbs up to you, Bobby Beeman too. Yeah, what you saw is what you got, with Bobby.